Hi, so this is part two of using Tidy Census Package in R to get Census Bureau data. The, so we're going to go over some more advanced things that we can do with Tidy Census. Um, here is a great link to a tutorial on how to get all census tracts um, in the US. Um, this uses the PER package as well as the Tidy Census package. And so what we need to do is first tell it which, um, which states we want. And this is a, a little bit of a shortcut to get all of the um, census track, all of the states. And basically we're going to tell it, get census tracts for all the states. Um, the reason we have to do this is because at the tract level, the census API requires you to feed it and tell it which state you want to get. And so normally you can only get one state at a time. So this is a way we can get all the states at once if we wanted to, or you could specify a list of states that you want to do like we did in the first video. Um, but here's a, a way we can rely on. There's the, the, the census API has a table called FIPS codes that um, you know, basically has all the codes. Um, and uh, in this little code here is going to tell it to go grab the actual abbreviations for all those states out of that table and put it into, we're going to put it into a little list over here. So um, it has a, a list of postal code abbreviations in it. Um, and then here's where we're going to make a new data frame called tracks underscore HH income. And we're going to tell it to use those states that we've just listed in this in here and um, have it go cycle through all the states and get the house median household income, which is the variable we've put in here from the five year ACS for 2017. So we'll run this. And down at the bottom, you should see that it is um, running through all the states. It's going to take a little while to run. Oops. So as I said before, that, that will let you get everything or like I said you can you can minimize this and tell it just to get certain FIPS codes or certain states um, certain states from FIPS codes and you can see as it's going through here it's telling you 37 is the FIPS code for North Carolina etc. I'm going to stop this since we've got plenty of other things to do and it's going to give me an error message saying it didn't finish but that's okay. Um, one of the other things I found is that sometimes you, there's just so many variables that you want to get that um, it's too hard to do what we did up here. Let me go back up a little where we told it here, get these variables. Um, typing up a list like this and grabbing those variables from wherever you want um, is fine if you've got, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or less. I guess it depends on how much you like typing. But once you start getting into, well, I want every variable out of that table, then maybe it's time to go another route. So that's what we're doing down here. We can, if you recall, we, we loaded a variable list earlier. Um, this one's going to load a variable list for ACS, the five-year ACS from 2017. And what we're going to do is we're going to have it actually build a variable list for us from that from that table that we just brought in. So, so here I want the variables from B1001, um, which is uh, sex by age. Um, and then there's also tables um, that break, break down sex by age for African Americans, Asians, Native Americans, etc. That's what all of these uh, tables are with the. So, what this is going to do here is it's going to look in that variable table that we have and it's going to look in a particular field called, well, there's the, the name, 
the name field has all those variable numbers in it. And it's going to use string detect, which is from the, um, we can find out what package that's from real easily by going like this. It is from the string R package. You can see that over here on the left side. Let me make it bigger this way. Um, and this tells you all about it over here if you ever get stuck on, if you're reading someone else's code and you're wondering where did they get that, that function. So the string detect function um, is a way to, to look for a pattern. Um, and so what we're doing is saying look in the name column and look in where it includes B01001B B, and then um, on and on. And it's going to find each of those rows and pull it out into a list of specific variables that we want. So let's see what that just made. It made a list here um, that allows us to see. You can, down at the bottom, it's going through all the variables. Look at that. That's all. Can you imagine trying to type all that? That's way too many, but it's everything that we want. Every, all the different racial groups plus the, the population as a whole broken down sex by age. That's a lot of data. Okay, so we're telling it, notice I'm using that same um, syntax where we could get multiple years of data, but here I'm just gonna say, let's get one year of data. And then here's the same syntax we saw in, in the first video where we're telling it this time we're telling it get these variables that we just put into that list and we want the state level we want just Minnesota and oops we want we want five-year ACS um, and let's see what we can get and so it's gonna cycle through um, all those different tables that we've requested we're, we're only getting one year and we're only getting one state but we're cycling through a lot of tables so you can see it's going to go through each each table basically. This one's going to take a little while as well. Okay, so now we have a table called sex by age. And you'll see that it has um, just data for 2017. And then it has the variable and the estimate. But how do we know what gender and what age each one is? And we can tell when we start to get into the racial groups we do have the B, C, D, that's here um, but there's not there's nothing here that allows us to really see that but remember our variable list does have that it tells us here 22 to 24 uh, 35 to 39 etc it's all in here it's just a little bit of a mess but I've got some written up some code that allows us to, to do that. And so the first thing is to join, we'll do a left join, um, that new table we just made, sex by age, with that variable list and have it grab that name and the label from this variable list and attach it to our new data table. Um, and it's going to do a, a little more work here. So now we should have sex by age. Now we have a label. Look at that. Males. We've got male and age, female, female and age. Um, it still needs a little more work because it, it would be great if we had, um, we need a, a column for the racial groups, a column for the gender, and a column for the age. So um, I wrote, I used the mutate um, function from the dplyr package to and case when to look and see which um, table this is and um, add a racial group label, a new column called racial group, and putting in labels for each group. So we're going to add that. And now that should be added to our table. There we go. There's our racial group. So we remember we have a set of records that are the population as a whole. And then we have the various racial breakdown, racial and ethnic breakdowns. Um, so we have those now. And then um, the age group, um, there might be some easier way to do this, uh, but this is what I figured out. I also did some, I think I did some recoding in here a little bit to get it 
um, to what I wanted. So for example, the, the, the census gives you um, age 18 and 19, age 20, 21, and 20 to 24. I decided to collapse them all into one group, so they're here. You could probably do some more efficient coding with this, um, but this also allows you to see that I actually, very clearly that I did that. So we're going to create a, a new column called age group. So now we should have age groups. There we go, age groups. And then finally we will, um, we can do some, some more bucketing. I'm going to make a bigger bucket, white non-Hispanic, um, the basically white and people of color and, and total. So I can collapse all those, those um, minority groups into one, especially since Minnesota is, is um, still very, very white. Um, so now we can start doing some analysis and, and um, summarize the, the, the groups. Let's see what I came up with here, sex by age two. So I can see how many people there are in each group by age. And my big goal here was to see if the younger population is more, has more, a greater share of people of color than the older population. Um, and we're going to pivot this a little bit wider. And now we can see what this looks like. There, we can, now we have, we can see that these younger groups are a uh, much larger uh, population of color than in the older groups. Make for an interesting graphic, wouldn't it? Trying to do this off of data.census.gov or the old American Fact Finder would have taken me the better part of a day, um, but this only took a uh, a couple of hours to write that code. Okay, so let's move on. It is possible to do some mapping here as well. Um, the tidy census package does allow you to bring the geometry with that allows you to do the mapping. And so um, the default in what we've been doing up until now, the default is geometry equals false. So it doesn't bring the geometry with it. But we can tell it to bring the geometry by saying geometry equals true. So here we're going to pull that um, median household income again, but from the five-year ACS and the 2017, so we could get all the counties in Minnesota. If you remember, the one-year ACS only gives us about 14 counties in Minnesota. So let's run this, and now we have a new data table. It's going to take a little while longer because of that geometry that it's pulling. Now there's a couple of ways that you can make some maps in, um, in R, in an R Markdown page. I am not the biggest expert on this, but I've figured out some basics to kind of get you started. Uh, ggplot will make a map. Um, it's not going to be super pretty, and there's, um, uh, but, and you can see it's got some issues that I, I haven't figured out how to deal with yet, but you can see the, um, the, um, and the colors are going in the opposite order you'd want them to go. The lighter areas being more, more. So the lighter colors are showing higher median household income, which is kind of the opposite of what you'd want. You'd want to try to flip that around. But it was pretty easy to get a map up and running fairly quickly. And this is using a, a, a baked in scale color scaling that is part of ggplot um, and you can you can export that map you made um, it's a little bit of that and so it's going to show up in your files there's my map boom yay um, beautiful okay so but let's go on I I also found this wonderful tutorial on how to use the leaflet package 
to make a more interactive map. And again, I am not the expert on this, but um, what you do, so I don't understand all of it, um, but I've got it to work and that's the most cool part. So you set up what color palette you want and you tell it what column from your data frame you're going to use to dictate the color palette. Um, so that's what this is doing right here. And then um, we're going to use um, this ST transform is going to project it onto a particular map. So this is a, a, a coordinate system. And then um, it's giving it, then we're going to use the leaflet package for um, all this styling and positioning and everything. So this builds the map and you'll see it, it stores it. And then we're going to display it using by calling it. It's going to take a minute. There, look at that. You can you can zoom in and out. You can click on a county and get a little tool tip. Uh, let's see what county you're talking about. It, I think you can probably do some more um, customization of the tool tips. You could get the exact median household income to drop in there. Um, and again, the, the color styling is going the opposite way you'd probably want. Well, maybe you'd want to do yellow as the high. It does kind of pop out. Um, so there's two options, ggplot and leaflet to make an interactive map. And oh, let me get out of here. So we can um, export that leaflet map using, uh, or save an image of it using um, the map map shot function from um, a map view package. Let's see if we can get this to run. And there, it's going to make it an HTML um, file with your, with your, your um, leaflet map. Um, you can, the other really cool thing for those of you who work with GIS is that you can spit out that data with that geometry as a shape file. So you could open it up in QGIS or um, ArcGIS, uh, and all you have to do is say ST write. Um, this is this uses the SF package. Uh, you tell it what data frame you want to export and what you want to call it. This is default is going to go into my project directory, but you can you can certainly add some code there to tell it to go into a different directory. So now we're going to get a shape file. There it is. All the files from my shape file all set to go. And when you, you can open this up, open it up in a mapping software right away and you're good to go. So you, I went through a lot of steps here, but imagine you started with that step of getting the census data. Let's go back up a little bit. Here we we pulled we pulled this the median household income data for counties in Minnesota. You could immediately jump from there to spitting out that shape file to do the rest of the, your, your work in GIS if you wanted to. That's the end of this video. Thank you for following along.